Welcome to our channel about classic cars today, we decided to show you a wonderful car of the time. Citroen DS19 Berlin, 1955-1967 In the automotive world, there are rarely events comparable in importance and scale to the debut of the Citroen DS. The presentation of this car at the Paris Motor Show in 1955 caused unprecedented excitement. Almost 800 orders were received in the first hour, 12,000 orders in the first day, and 80,000 buyers paid in advance within 10 days. Compared to its predecessor of the Traction Avant series, the Citroën DS looked like the transportation of the future from a science fiction novel. But beneath its futuristic shell was even more innovative stuff, adjustable hydropneumatic suspension, front disc brakes, semi-automatic transmission, front wheel drive, and power steering. No wonder that Citroën DS takes such high positions in international ratings. It ranks third in the Car of the Century competition, 1999, second in the list of the most beautiful cars according to the Daily Telegraph, and first as the most beautiful car of all time according to Classic and Sports Car Magazine. The development of the new model to replace the Traction Avant began before the war in the framework of the VGD, French Voiture a Grande Diffusion Large Mass Vehicle, project. This process was led by French aviation engineer André Lefebvre, and Italian sculptor Flaminio Bertoni was responsible for the design. The first prototypes appeared in 1947, road tests began in 1951, but until 1955 the car was kept in high secrecy. Because of this Citroën DS came to the market untried, with a lot of defects. The company failed to provide service stations with repair manuals in time, so many owners didn't know where to repair their failed cars. But when the shortcomings were corrected, Citroën DS earned universal recognition. It was driven by almost the entire French elite, politicians, aristocrats, artists, poets, actors, etc., although police officers and cab drivers loved it just as much. The DS could be found in all former French colonies, but it was produced mainly in Paris, at the K. André Citroën factory. In small quantities, the model was assembled in Great Britain, South Africa, Yugoslavia, and Australia. The peak of sales came in 1970, when the Citroën DS was already quite outdated. In 1975, it was replaced by a five-door Citroën CX. A total of 1455 746 units were produced from 1955 to 1975. Citroën DS, including the related model ID. The design of the Citroën DS was dominated by sleek, streamlined shapes. They were calibrated in a wind tunnel, so the drag coefficient was 0 0.382. The frontal style was defined by the absence of a radiator grille. It was replaced by holes above and below the front bumper. The sloping hood, tapered pontoon sides with closed rear wheel arches and drooping roof provided the car with an impetuous silhouette. Flaminio Bertoni's final touch was the round turn signals in the rear roof pillars, which had the appearance of ice cream cups or jet pods. The Citroën DS was an object from another universe that fell from the sky, as Roland Barthes put it, dedicating a chapter to it in his collection of philosophical essays. Even the name of the model confirmed its extraterrestrial origin. The letters DS, D-E-S, and French read the same as the word DS goddess. The car was perceived as an object of modern art. In 1957, it was shown at the Triennale di Milano exhibition, placed vertically, like a rocket taking off. Fantasies were vividly realized in the movie Fantomas S.E. de Chain, 1965, where the Citroën DS of Fantomas was transformed into a jet plane. In the process of development, the Citroën DS was planned to be equipped with an air-cooled opposition six-cylinder engine, but it turned out to be too noisy and quickly overheated. Then-engineer Walter Beckiam modernized the inline four-cylinder OHV engine from the Traction Avant 11CV model, replacing the cast-iron head with an aluminum one with hemispherical combustion chambers and a two-chamber carburetor. As a result, power increased from 60 to 75 horsepower at the same displacement, 1911 cubic centimeters. To reduce the height of the hood and improve weight distribution, the designers moved the power unit far behind the leading front axle, and the gearbox, radiator, and spare tire were placed in the front overhang. 
Semi-automatic transmission Citromatic consisted of a conventional four-speed gearbox without synchronizer in first gear, hydraulic control unit, and dry single-disc clutch with hydraulic drive. There was no clutch pedal, but gears were shifted manually, using a lever on the steering column. The most interesting feature of the Citroen DS was its self-leveling suspension with adjustable ground clearance. Developed by Paul Mages with the account for the poor condition of roads in post-war France, it was first used on the Citroen 156 model in 1954. Instead of springs in this suspension used nitrogen-filled spheres with a diameter of 12 centimeters, and instead of shock absorbers, hydraulic cylinders with pistons tied to the arms. The guiding elements were transverse, front, or longitudinal, rear, arms, connected with stabilizers of transverse stability. The mechanism was as follows, a central axial plunger pump driven by the power unit maintained a constant pressure of 175 bar in two hydraulic accumulators, which distributed fluid to the hydropneumatic elements depending on the load on each wheel and drained its residue into a special reservoir. In addition, the Citroen DS suspension was in the same system with power steering, electrohydraulic transmission, and hydraulic brakes. Citroen DS was one of the first cars equipped with front disc brakes, and they were located not on the wheels, but on the side, close to the differential. At the rear there were drum brakes, and the whole system was two-circuit hydraulic, except for the mechanical parking brake, which acted on the front discs. The front track, 1,500 mm, was wider than the rear, 1,295 mm. But the Michelin radial tires were also of different widths, 165 or 15 in the front and 155 or 15 in the rear. Combined with rack and pinion steering, hydropneumatic suspension, and power steering, this provided remarkable handling. The Citroen DS didn't drive, it floated like a fabulous magic carpet. When the engine was switched off, the suspension automatically lowered the car, when switched on it raised it, and compensated for sharp turns and load by increasing rigidity. With the help of a lever in the cabin, the driver could choose one of five fixed positions of the body relative to the ground. No jack was required to change a wheel, DS could move on three wheels, which was repeatedly demonstrated for advertising purposes. The Citroen DS had a steel underbody with welded side members and a thin space frame to which the easily removable external body panels were bolted. On early models, the hood and trunk were made of aluminum and the roof was made of fiberglass. The interior was rather narrow, but the long wheelbase, 3,124mm, and flat floor provided enough legroom. The car was equipped with upholstered seats, plastic dashboard with a horizontal speedometer, and a unique steering wheel, which was held on a single curved spoke. Until 1958, the Citroën DS was offered only with a four-door sedan body, Berlin. Then a station wagon, known as the Brake in France, Safari, or State in the UK, and Wagon in the US, went on sale. Equipped with a fifth door and two halves, hinged side and upward opening glass, and vertical taillights, it was available in three configurations, brake, five-seater with optional benches along the sides of the cargo area, family alley, seven-seater with folding seats in the middle, and commercial, five-seater with folding rear seat, including an ambulance version. As for the two-door convertible, decapotable, it appeared in the catalog only in 1961, and this body was made not at the factory, but in the Chaperon Atelier. Until 1975, only 1365 copies of Citroën DS with open top were built, and today they are valued twice as much as sedans. There were also more rare Henri Chaperon bodies, the La Croisette, Lucati and Palm Beach convertibles, the Lou Paris, Concorde, and Lou Lehman Coupes, and the Prestige, Lorraine, and Majesty sedans. Some of them came with picnic containers, a bar, a television, and even a radio telephone. 